Hey everyone, I wanted to come on today to talk to you guys about three ways you, three choices, I'll say three choices you can make to live a better life right now. If you guys don't know who I, who I am, my name is Emily Vermillion. I'm a certified life coach and I'm a podcast host. My podcast is called The Thought Vault. You can find me on Instagram, obviously on here, um, and I have a blog. So you can find all the links to that on this page. And I hope that you will look at other places. Um, check out The Thought Vault. A new episode drops every Wednesday, like today. Um, and I love to just help people gain insight and intention into their lives and have encouragement and affirming who they are in Christ and how to live out our days fully recognizing that and believing that and coaching people on how to do that. So that is my heart and that is what I love to do and that's why I put all this content out here and pour into all of this. So let's jump into today's topic. So the first thing, the first choice you need to decide is to stop lying. Stop lying. And this one is a hard one because even if you're not maliciously making up fibs, <laughs> we lie to ourselves often. We lie to ourselves often about our relationships, about our health about our jobs, about what we're doing, about the friends we have, about the choices that we're making, um, the how we spend our money. Like we lie to ourselves. And it's often because we are trying to live up to expectations. Expectations that we've put on ourselves based on past experiences or beliefs or criticisms or influence of other people over our lives. So we're making these expectations, creating these expectations of ourselves, or we're living up to expectations of other people who have great influence on our life. And we create this entire assumption of how life needs to be and how life should be. And we are lying to ourselves to meet those expectations. We're telling ourselves, yes, I love what I do. I love my job. I've been there. <laughs> I talk about this. Uh, this is one of my first pivotal moments, uh, seasons in my life where I made a drastic change. And it was hard because I had gone to school for a very specific thing. I got a job in that very specific field. I had told myself and convinced myself that this was the perfect match for me. And it was utter, utter misery <laughs> that I have to live out every day going into that job. And I was trying to lie to myself and saying like, this is good. Like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I was not clearly because it did not fit me as a person. It did not fit me. And I knew that. And I kept trying to fit that square peg and that round hole. And it was causing me extreme heartache. And we do this to ourselves in many contexts. Maybe it's not your job. Maybe it's a relationship that you're in. Maybe it is uh, the knowledge you have about how to take care of yourself and or what you need to look like, even though you don't care. You know, you don't you don't care exactly if you have makeup on every time you leave the house, but you're doing it because you're trying to meet this expectation. You're lying to yourself that you do care and this does matter to you. So this could be pushed into every different circumstance that you have in life. It could, you know, be evident in so many different areas. And it really comes down to us just trying to convince ourselves of something that we're not or that we innately have no interest in. But because this person does, now I need to do that. It became evident to me more of these things in my life when I became a parent because I would see this parent doing this thing and this parent doing that thing and the trends of, you know, cute lunchbox lunches <laughs> and cute, uh, you know, outings that these moms would organize and all this extra, extra stuff, all these programs they put their kids in and stuff. And not that any of those are innately bad, but, you know, me feeling like I need to live up to this perception and expectation of this perfect mom when I don't really have a desire to, to do that crafty stuff. And you know, 
my kids are made for me, so I can just follow their lead. Maybe they are into crafts and I can pour into that, but maybe they're not. So I'm going to sit down and make them make things, you know, <laughs> like, you know, that's just an example. But so many times we are lying to ourselves little by little all throughout the day about choices we're making that we don't want to make or that we don't have interest in doing. So the first way to choose, to, to the first choice to make to make your life better right now is to stop lying to yourself. Stop showing up to that, you know, thing you've signed up for every week when you don't really like going, you know? Figure out an exit strategy for this job that you can't see yourself going to another day, right? Get out of the relationship that's sucking you dry because you just are emotionally drained from the energy it takes to pour into this, you know? Like, there's so many different scenarios and circumstances. So, what is it? You know. I don't have to tell you. You know in your heart what you're lying about to yourself in the context of your life and your circumstance and your responsibilities. What are you lying to yourself about? Stop doing it. Stop lying to yourself. That's the first thing. The second thing is to choose to, to fully know that emotions are temporary. And why does that matter? Well, because emotions are not real things. Emotions are reactions caused by thoughts. And this plays into our into who we are and how we are responding to our own like life and how we're responding to other people. Number 1, you are not responsible for another person's emotions. You another person's emotions don't get to control your your emotions. That is something that is hard to learn especially for people who are very in tune to your emotions. I'm one of those people and have a wide array of emotions and can empathize. People that are quote unquote empaths have a really hard time with this. And I am in that boat. I have a really hard time with not allowing other people's emotions to to affect me. And oftentimes it's because we're so centered on what is going on around us and to us that we can't disassociate like this person's probably just having a bad day like I'm sorry that they're really not happy right now but that doesn't mean I don't have to be happy right like I get to make the choice and you also get to choose to not let your emotions control you it doesn't mean you don't feel emotions or you walk around like a robot because you most certainly do not but you do not have to allow emotions to derail your entire motivation, your entire day going forward. Have the emotion, feel it. Take a moment to think about why did that just make me so mad? Normally, it's not even the thing that is right in front of you. Normally, it's because you have something going on up here that is just drumming in the background that you're thinking about, thinking about. Maybe that's happened a couple times today and you're in a, a buildup and then all of a sudden this one thing happens and it just triggers this response, right? And then we let it snowball, snowball, snowball into more, more anger, more frustration, more disappointment, more grief, more aggravation. And we can't rein it back in. Like it's hard to stop the snowball that's already flying down the hill and gaining momentum and getting bigger and stronger and stronger. It's hard to run after it and pull it back and stop it, right? So my best tip for this is you allow the emotion, you give yourself a minute instead of responding in the emotion, which this is so hard to do. Because when we're triggered, we wanna just be like, duh! You know, instead of like sitting in that and just letting it wash over you. Because if you get to the point of being able to pause long enough to let it wash over you, you're going to feel the emotion and the feeling come and go. You're going to have, you know, recognize that, yeah, emotions are temporary and you can let go of them. Like you can get past them because an emotion is only caused by what you're thinking. So if you don't want to be angry, if you don't want to be sad and frustrated, guess what? Think something of opposite nature. So if you woke up and you were in a tizzy because you got up late and you were running around the house and you jump in the car, you forget something, you have to run back in, you jump back in the car, you go, you hit red light after red light after red light, you're going to be late, you're going to be late, you're going to be late, and you're mad about it, 
You can either sit in that aggravation and let it affect your entire day, or you can say, okay, there's a reason why I was late. And this comes to mind um, because you hear about these stories of these people who, had they left their house perfectly on time, they would have been involved in a terrible car accident, or you know, they would have missed a phone call that they really needed to get at that time. You know, you don't, we don't all know what are the all, what all the intricacies of things that happen. Okay. God does. We don't. So you can just let things, let things ride and have a, have a script to flip, you know, tell yourself, okay, I'm, I'm late. Oh, well, like what's going to happen now? You know, like I was late five minutes ago when I knew I was going to be late. I'm still late when I get here. Like I'm late regardless. Why continue to be mad about it? Right. Um, why continue to let that infiltrate my whole day? Because it, it doesn't change the rest of anything, right? Like, it's just a fact. Okay, I'm five minutes late. You know, it is what it is. Um, and so this, this thought process can be applied to many different things. Other people's emotions are not our emotions. And our emotions don't have to control who we are and what we want to think and what we want to, like, feel. We get to let emotions come and go. And we get to think about them and address them and move on from them and have different thoughts to give us different feelings. You know, today I was having a moment of getting frustrated because I needed to get out the door to get the kids on get the to get the kids to school on time. And then it was just like, okay, it's fine. Like I let the frustration come and go, and then I just took a deep breath, honestly, and thought, okay that's part of my morning moving on now, you know, and that was the choice I made to not let it infiltrate the rest of my mindset for the rest of the entire day. Like not worth that extra energy. It's not worth it because I don't want to feel aggravated all day. So you get to choose your emotions. How do you do that? By thinking. So if you want to think sad things and you want to think angry things and you want to be in a tizzy, well then think about all the things you're mad about. Think about all the things that are making you upset. Think about all the things that are frustrating you. But if you want to think about calming and peaceful things, recite scripture in your mind. Say a prayer to God. Take a deep breath. Tell yourself, that was just a moment. It doesn't matter now. Is it going to matter in two hours? Nope. Then it, it's not going to bother me at this moment, right? So let things go. Let emo Choose to know that emotions are temporary and they do not control us. And the third thing is to rest in the knowledge and making the choice to fully recognize that you are reconciled to God. And that is kind of sounds odd. So what does that mean? Well, we have nothing else to prove. We don't have to force things into our lives to make our lives more whole. We don't have to focus on what other people are doing or what they're not doing, how we're measuring up to that, what's going on in our life against other people's. Because our sole purpose for being here is to love and to serve Christ. And that seems like that's too simplistic. That doesn't address all the hurt and the pain and the um, struggle that I'm facing and the heartache that I'm dealing with. No. And I'm not saying that those things aren't a part of life and that you get to just pff, brush it off. But what I am saying is that you do not have to figure out how to make your life more full because as a child of God, your purpose is already determined you are already fully accepted, loved, and known by God. And so when you are going through struggles, when you are going through heartache, when you are dealing with even joyful things or confusion or whatever, the resounding foundation of who you are is stable because you are reconciled to God and he is working in your life. And when we focus on him first and we reorient our focus on God and what he is about and who he says we are, 
we're not having to try to fill something that can only be filled by knowing Christ because no amount of money, no amount of health, no amount of relationship, no amount of um, career success, no amount of any of that is ever going to complete you or make you feel like you've arrived. You know the old saying, you know, like, yeah, people, once you get money, like, you can never have enough money, right? Like, nothing is satisfying. Nothing of this world is fully satisfying. There's nothing. There's no win. There's no, when I have this, I will be this. When I have this, I will have made it. When I get this, you know, then. Because, number one, you don't know when, when is coming. <laughs> we don't know how much time we have left. And so the, the beauty of that is that we get to just be present now because we know that God is here with us in this moment every time that we're breathing a breath. Like God is with us and he fulfills all those needs. So in your darkest moments, you have him. You have this firm foundation. You are already loved and accepted by him. There is nothing you could do or not do that's going to make him not love you or fall out of grace with him. You are continually and forever, for eternity, always forgiven, always loved. And when we can let go of like having to force things in our life to have arrived at some point that we believe is going to make us who we are and who we like we're meant to be. Once we can let that go, we can just be who we are right now because we were all, we all have what we need right now to live and feel full in joy. And I think that's what we're all after. Like we all just want to feel safe and joyful and content content. And we can have that right now. Like we don't have to chase it. We are content in Christ. And that is something that seems like we would all have a grasp on as, you know, if you're a believer, like we think like, well, yeah, sure. But are you really walking out on that? Do you really feel content in your everyday life? It doesn't mean life's going to be easy, but do you have just a uh, underlying contentment every moment of every day that joy just exudes from you? And if you don't, why don't you? You need to ask yourself that. Why don't you? And so this kind of leads into what today's episode of the Thought Vault talks about because the reason why you probably don't is you're believing in one of these four false beliefs that I go into detail about on the podcast. So I will put a link to the podcast in the comments of this video um, so you can click it and go listen to today's episode because in order not to make this video super long, I want you to go listen over there because that episode dives into why you may not be feeling reconciled, reconciled about who you are, who Christ is, who you are in him, and your life in general. And we tackle this in the episode. So go check out today's episode of The Thought Vault. Um, find it in the comments of this video. Um, and, 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 and listen to that. It's called False Beliefs, the title of the episode. False Beliefs on The Thought Vault Podcast. So those three things. Stop lying to yourself. Choose to know that your emotions are temporary and they do not control us. And three, know and choose to live out your day knowing you are reconciled. And you're going to feel a lot better about who you are, what you're doing, why you're doing it, and where you do want to go. doesn't mean you don't aspire for things, but you get to live content and full now. Work on those three things. Go check out the False Beliefs episode on the Thought Vault podcast. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.